people say, oh, I hate rich people. No, you don't. You hate rich people till you become rich, mm-hmm. right? right? So what you hate is a game system. Right. Oh, but hold on, let's follow the illogic logic. Yeah. Let's take all the money in the world, distribute to everybody in the world equally. Here's what's gonna happen. In three years, the folks who had the money before will have it again. Because they got the memo on how money works and you never got it. You just thought it was all about making money. I, if I win the lottery, by the way, 70% of those who win the lottery are bank, bankrupt in five years. If I win the lottery and nothing else, I, get a, uh, I have a million dollars extra, I see a homeless guy on the street corner on the off ramp, I feel sorry for him, I give him a million bucks and that's all I do. I give him a million bucks, he'll be broke in six months. So, because if nothing changes here, and nothing changes here, nothing's gonna change here, nothing's gonna change here. Money's a mindset. This mindset thing, it's everything. It's every, it's literally everything. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you wanna watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I want to help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. I right, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asks cash. So get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. You see him change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. Welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, I know a lot of people throw out the the, the phrase GOAT, greatest of all time. Listen, I got the triple OG in the building. I'm going to tell you how this man changed my life and doesn't even know it. It is our first time ever talking, ever meeting, but he changed my life. I'm going to take you back 2004. Uh, I was a banker uh, at, a, at, a, at a bank, obviously, uh, at one of the major banks, uh, and I was just getting tired. I was, I, you know, I come from the hood, grew up in the St. Nicholas Projects, and, you know, made it out. I was like, yo, I love what I'm doing, but I realized that all of my clients did not look like me. And I said to myself, I am, this guy from the hood is out here teaching uh, other people how to build wealth where there are people in my community that look like me that need the same exact information. So I went on a hunt. I was looking. I was like, how can I get into the inner city schools? And in this book, Banking on Our Future, I picked up the book and I started reading on, on the book. Then I realized it was a whole program and I wound up joining the program. Uh, and, and since then, I knew that there was a lane in financial education, a lane in you know, teaching our people about wealth. And so this is almost 20 years ago. And now I'm in the flesh <laughs> with the man, the myth, the, the living legend, no, no, no. John Hope Bryan. What's up, brother? Oh, man. My honor. My honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, and because, back. again, you know, as somebody who, um, you know, I you know, grew up in the, in, in the inner city, mm. uh, been, you know, packing bags and selling mixtapes. So I was always an entrepreneur. <laughs> but when I got into the banking world, my eyes opened up. Mm. into how to really build wealth. Um, and then, again, you know, since your program, I've been in inner city schools, I've been in churches, I've been in jails, Rikers Island, like really just doing this work uh, because there is such an importance. Still, though, 20 years later, there's still this importance. Um, and so before we get into all of that, for those who don't know, who is John O'Brien? Well, uh, today, I'm just your valet. I'm just carrying your bags, brother. Uh, uh, first of all, God bless you, man. Quince- Ambassador Andrew Young would say, my mentor, my role model, uh, the closest thing we've got to Nelson Mandela in North America, he would say coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Mm. So uh, I think the fact that we came full circle is, you know, one could say coincidence, maybe it's just God doing his magic, right? 
Uh, Ambassador Andrew Young, who was with Dr. King on that balcony when he was assassinated, when he was focusing on money, the Poor People's Campaign. That's why he was probably assassinated. He, he has said to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. So what you're trying to do here today, and I just love the, the, the dichotomy of messages here. One is showing you how to, to make some money, showing, showing, trying to, how to keep some money. One is definitely taking your money. <laughs> uh, I won't even talk about what this thing is here. Some people wouldn't know. I just, uh, just, I'm still blown, my, my mind's still blown by this. And this is, and this is how money flows, which is the passport, which is uh, international currency. Uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, but like you, I'm just my mother's child. Uh, and I grew up in, the, as you say, the hood. I said, the hood, D-A hyphen H-O-O-D, the hood, in Compton, California, South Central L- L.A. Uh, homeless for six months of my life when I was 18. Um, so I take no for vitamins. Like, you know, I, success to me is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Like, over the round it, do it, I'm going to get to it. Nothing, nothing bothers me. Um, and and, and I, I really think that this resiliency piece, which you just described, is really the the strategic advantage of black America. Mm-hmm. We are, we've been doing so much with so little for so long. We can almost do anything with nothing. Mm-hmm. So uh, I started my first business when I was 10 years old. I guess I'll tell you that story later. Homeless when I was 18. Uh, started Operation Hope when I was 26. Um, everybody laughed at me. Mm-hmm. Rolled their eyes, you know, like, you, know, you, you mentioned, you know, it's been 20 years. But Quincy Jones, another one of my mentors, says that it takes 20 years to change a culture. In the last 20 years, we've made dumb sexy. Mm. We've dumbed down and celebrated it. Mm. And now it's time to make smart sexy again. Look at what you're doing. Yeah. You're making smart sexy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, when, 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 ladies, when you go to the club tonight, when you go to the, 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 the COVID free vaccinated club tonight, don't just say, is a dude, oh, the guy's handsome. Oh, he's pretty. Oh, you know, guys, don't just say, oh, the lady's fine. Ask what their credit score is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right, ask if they have a job, right? Yeah. Ask if they, they have you know, like career ambitions. Do you have home skills? Can you raise a child, right? right? I mean, this is some practical stuff, right? Because cute will fall away, mm-hmm. right? And then you're left with dumb and, and unqualified. And on a real talk basis, I still haven't answered your question about what I do, but this is my passion. Sure. Half, of our, half of black folks, we're brilliant in every way, man. Mm-hmm. But half of us, our credit scores are below 640. Mm-hmm. Not poor people. Everybody, yeah. which means you got half of black America locked out of the free enterprise system because mm-hmm. you, you can't get a, a small business loan for less than a 700 credit score at a bank because it's, it's viewed as risky credit. Yeah. You can't get a decent mortgage below 680. You can't get a good car loan below 650. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reality is if you're driving around in a Mercedes right now, you have a, you have a, a 600 credit score or a 580 credit score. Mm-hmm. It's not a Mercedes, it's Mercedes payments. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if the interest rate is 18%, it's, a, it's not a car, it's a bomb. It's right. going to blow, you, it's gonna blow you, you up and your, your generational wealth uh, promise. Yeah. So I've created Operation Hope to try to change the trajectory of our people mm-hmm. at scale mm-hmm. in what I believe was the next movement mm-hmm. for our people, which was to move on, on building on civil rights, mm-hmm. to move to what I call silver rights, to move from protesting in the streets cashing checks and doing deals in the business suites to move from just cashing checks to writing them to move from a color discussion and an argument about black or white or red or blue to the color everybody understands which is green which is what this is all a bit of even slavery wasn't about trying to abuse you or me or my grand grandparents great grandparents great great grandparents it was about economics it was how do you get how do you get people to work for free how do you get free labor at the, at the bottom line, it wasn't personal. And we take it personal, we've gotten emotional about it, we get distracted, uh, and as Malcolm X would say, bamboozled, tricked, and fooled, while somebody is literally robbing you in broad daylight. And so, it, when I was growing up in the hood, man, it, it, it frustrated me that I looked around my neighborhood and I saw in my 500 credit score neighborhood a check casher next to a payday loan lender, next to a rental owned store, next to a title lender, next to a pawn shop, next to a liquor store, and a church down the street, the local therapist, because we won't admit we're crazy. We, we won't go see a shrink. We all, all of us crazy. You just, you know, the only question is what you do something about it, right? Uh, we won't admit that because we're ashamed for some reason. Um, 
So we go to church and we scream and holler so we don't kill somebody on Monday. We, we get just to get, to get that out of our system. And all this, this sort of depression or organized community involvement, I wanted to break the cycle of it. Um, we've, we've normalized it, man. We've normalized this. Like we don't, people watching this may, as a result of watching this with fresh eyes, may go through that neighborhood and go, that's not normal. That's not normal. That's not normal. Those things over there are not normal. They don't exist in 700 credit score neighborhoods. <laughs> they don't. They only exist in our neighborhoods, right? So Operation Hope was created for that purpose. It's now the largest financial literacy and financial inclusion organization in America, which is the largest economy in the world. Um, we're in, we have offices in 180 offices, full-time offices in um, 30 plus states. And I have an app that you can access in all 50 states. And we have four main clients. We've directed $3.8 billion into our neighborhoods for home ownership, small business ownership, entrepreneurship. Uh, four main clients, I just mentioned that. Um, raising credit scores, 54 points in six months. 120 points in 24 months. Nothing changes your life more than God and love and moving your credit score 120 points. But at, at base, you and I are the same. I'm just an entrepreneur. And I uh, to prove that this was a movement, and I, I, I got on the other side of the ledger, so about four years ago, I started a company called The Promise Homes Company. No affirmative action, no government programs, no hookups, no favors, just a real estate company. So now I'm the largest owner of single family rental homes in America who happens to be black. So The wow. Promise Homes Company owns 700 homes in Atlanta and North Florida worth $125 million. Wow. But that didn't exist in 2016. Wow. Did, and so we, four years. Four years. Wow. Just proves what we can do when we focus on it, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it's really, it's really, uh, you say that you, that I helped you. In reality, you've inspired me because I think if we had an ash on every block in America, mm -hmm. nothing else, mm -hmm. just that, mm -hmm. you change black America. You might even change America. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need a President Obama. God bless him. I'm glad we had a black president. Yeah. You, we need we need a, Bill, a black Bill Gates more than we needed a black President Obama. <laughs> right? Right, right? You know, you need somebody who, who who you need a multi 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 billionaire who's going to create billionaires and then create hundred hundred millionaires and create millionaires because all those people are going to going to create philanthropy in their neighborhoods, going to create internships, jobs, economic opportunity. The triple down effect from that is off the chain. Yeah. So I, I just love what you're doing, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate you. And I mean, this I'm like, like I'm, I'm just in class right now. So I, I, you can talk because, um, you know, for, for me, just doing this work is really like on the back of you, right? Like just kind of look, looking at, at the movement and, and to your point, um, just knowing that it, it takes a lot of us to do it. Um, but you said something, you know, offline about there being a difference between or <laughs> You know, we have everything we need yeah. in the community. Like, we know yeah. how to make money, but there's a difference between making, making money, money and, and building wealth. wealth. Please talk to us about that. Oh, man, it's everything. We, this is a whole show we don't have time for. <laughs> I mean, as you can tell, as you know, I got all real frustrated about these. The, as my yeah, son, yeah, yeah, yeah. my son educated me that these are cash dispensing machines or cash throwing machines for strip clubs. Like, right. the fact that everybody knows what this is, but, but me, is a compliment for me. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad for me to, to all my friends who actually know what this is. Mm -hmm. Because this is why we're broke. Yeah. Like, this is what we're an expert in. And, and to the extent that we're an expert in the opposite of this, because this is just throwing money out to somebody who doesn't know you, right? And the only reason that she's accepting the money is for cash. I mean, the only reason she's there at the strip club is for money. It's the only reason she's there. She, she don't love you. She don't know you, yeah. right? It's just economic. So the opposite of that is people say, oh, no, no, no. but John, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm out here making this money. I'm out here making this cash. I'm out here getting this dollar. None of that matters. None of that matters. Yeah. My boys are obsessed with, I want to make this money. I want to get this cash. I want to get this dollar. I want to make this buck. You'll be dead broke. If that's all you do, if that's all you know, God bless you. But you, you, no one will say you're lazy, but you'll be dead broke. Because money has velocity. It's going to come. And it's going to go. Whether you participate with that velocity or not is irrelevant. So uh, this relates to two different things. So the only way you build wealth is in your sleep. Mm. Like, so you can't work hard. To no, go. no. You work, you work hard to make money. Mm. Nine to five, you make your money. Mm. Five to nine, you get your hustle on. 
<laughs> so you're nine to you're five and you're nine to five for the answers you're five to nine, right? You hustle, right? Yeah. But you actually build wealth in the next nine to five. You literally build wealth in your sleep. It's called compounding, stocks, bonds, investment income, residual income, employees, uh, royalties and residual rights from publishing portfolios. Uh, so I'm in um, I'm in the Bahamas with my family and we're uh, my wife, Shatra, knew this guy who had a jet ski business. And uh, and so he's like, John, I know you from the videos, man. I I'll give you a free ride. No, I'll pay you. Yeah, I just show me how to make money, man. Show me how to make money. So he gets me on the back of his jet ski. We're going, I don't know, 30 miles an hour on his jet ski. So he's asking me questions. Like, show me how to make money. I don't know how to make money, man. Come on, man. Show me how to make money. I have no idea to make money. Man, you just messing with me. I've seen all your videos. Come on, man. Show me how to make money. Yeah. Sir, I have no clue how to make money. I can tell you how to build wealth. Mm. Mm. You know, you can have, get a $100 million NBA contract. Mm -hmm and be selling Slurpees at uh, Starbucks in five years. <laughs> we've all known, we've already seen that movie, right? So, in fact, I can take all the money in the world, distribute it equally to everybody in the world. This is the socialist dream everybody talks about, right? Oh, John, we just, just give everybody the money. Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's follow that track. Take all the money from the wealthy in the world, because you're angry at them. By the way, people say, oh, I hate rich people. No, you don't. You hate rich people till you become rich. Right. So what you hate is a game system. Right. Oh, but hold on, let's follow the illogic logic. Yeah. Let's take all the money in the world, distribute to everybody in the world equally. Here's what's going to happen. In three years, the folks who have the money before will have it again. Because they got the memo on how money works, and you never got it. You just thought it was all about making money. I, if I win the lottery, by the way, 70% of those who win the lottery are bank, bankrupt in five years. If I win the lottery and nothing else, I, get a, uh, I have a million dollars extra. I see a homeless guy on the street corner on the off ramp. I feel sorry for him. I give him a million bucks and that's all I do. I give him a million bucks, he'll be broke in six months. So, because if nothing changes here and nothing changes here, nothing's gonna change here, nothing's gonna change here. M money's a mindset. So you literally build wealth in your sleep. So back to the start, to the guy on the, on the jet ski. So, he, so I said, look, man, you go, I'm about to pay you for this jet ski. You're going to have enough money to go home, pay for some dinner. Maybe you pay for your rent. I don't know. You got a week's worth of cash flow for me and some other people. Then you broke again. Here's what you're, you're missing. Hey, how you guys doing? Hold on, hold on, don't press that button because that's what I do every time I'm looking at an ad that I don't want to see. This ad just happened to be life changing. I just happen to own one of the biggest home health care companies in the state of Georgia. I can help you create your own. Just to give you a little bit of insight, I send out registered nurses, LPNs, and CNAs to take care of people inside of the homes that cannot take care of themselves. But guess what? You don't have to have any medical background and you don't have to have any medical knowledge. So if you're wanting to change your life and you have a passion for actually taking care of people, then go ahead and sign up for Home Health Care Blueprint. I'll see you guys later. You need to go to all these hotels around here, go to the concierge, create a revenue sharing agreement and a referral agreement. You create some software through Shopify. We do it through, home, through our One Million Black Business Initiative. We do this for free. I'm not selling you anything. We, we'll hook it for business for free. So hook an account with Shopify. You want a website and a payment system and a scheduling, a scheduling app. You tell all the hotels when you refer to my, your jet ski kit business, they get a referral fee. So everybody wins. So when you're asleep now, as the hotel guests are checking in at the various hotels, because all the reason I, he had me as a client is he actually literally looked me in the eye and said, I will give you a jet ski ride because he knew my wife. How often can you do that? Right. But now you're asleep and now you have a whole group of people Ash, around the whole island, uh -huh. as your ambassadors, right. as your sales team, they're working for you at midnight, uh -huh. you sleep. Right. By the time you get up in the morning, you now have booked uh -huh. 20 jet ski appointments on the scheduling app with all your boys on the island who also have jet skis that you've now tied together in a network of revenue sharing. And when you get up in the morning, you just made $2,000. Uh -huh. Now you do that seven nights in a row, and the math is easy. Right. Even on, so you're making money in your sleep, you're building wealth, and now you're making money, money in the day, you're building wealth at night. Three things that have never gone backwards in American history. Real estate value, stock market value, GDP, gross domestic product. So the first thing somebody's gonna say here is, come on now, John, we had the rec economic crisis of 2009. Uh -huh. Yeah, all that scared was you. Uh. <laughs> Warren, Buffett, Warren Buffett said, when people are be greedy, be afraid. When right. people are afraid, be greedy. greedy. Yep. So what do black folks do? We, buy, we sell on the dip. 
We buy on, we buy on the hype. <laughs> what, you know, hype on hype on Bitcoin. Hype on what, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Hype on real estate. We buy on the hype. We buy at the bottom, top of the market, and we sell on the dip. Oh my God, there's an economic crisis. Oh my God, the the, the 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 market's down. Oh my God, the appraiser says my property's undervalued. Well, if you got to live somewhere, and you can afford to pay the mortgage, what do you care what the value is? You got to live somewhere. Hold it. Buy, rehab, and hold. So I owned a home in condo in LA. I'm over answering the question, but this, this is everything. And I bought this condo for $225,000, townhome. It went down in 2009 uh, to $170,000. I ignored it. I had put a police officer in there as a landlord, I mean, as a, re- as a renter. I'm the landlord. I ignored it because he's paying my, my mortgage payment and, my, and I just paid the $1,000 or whatever it was in property taxes. I forgot about it. All my friends told me to sell, and they sold. Yep. All right, 2015, I sell it. You wanna guess what I sell it for? 400,000. 750. Wow, 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 wow. I just made $600,000 in my sleep. Wow. I then took a 1031 tax-free exchange, mm-hmm. took that money, put it in another property, which is now worth four and a half million dollars. I'm not brilliant. I'm not, I'm not even smart. This is not, has nothing to do with smart. This is called compounding. Yeah. Here's what happens with stock values, right? With real estate values. They do this, mm-hmm. crisis, they, they, they dip. What do we do? What do we do? We, this, we, we sell, sell, we sell right? right? The investors buy it. Right. Here's what happens. It corrects above the line. Yeah. You were here before. Mm-hmm. You went here, it dipped. Mm-hmm. It corrects above the line. It's another, another crisis. It dips. We sell. It corrects above the line. That's been happening literally since the 1600s. Wow. Stock market values, same thing. Yeah, yeah. We, we, it goes up. It dips. What do we do? We sell on the dip. Mm-hmm. Or we don't own in the first place. Only 13% of black people own the stock, right? So this $7 trillion, it was $7 trillion of stock market increased value in 2020. Yeah. Trillion. Yeah, yeah. Black folks didn't participate in any of it. Mm. So... So this is, this is, this is the, the fundamentals of economics are as solid as this table right here, or as solid as your heart. Uh-huh. They're unbending. The problem is, is what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us, but we think we know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's an old Southern saying, Ash. No matter how much I love you, my son or my daughter, uh-huh. if I don't have wisdom, I can only give you my own ignorance. Uh-huh. So, so out of love, we pass down bad habits from generation to generation. Yeah. Just because somebody's your mother or your father, just because they're your mother or your father doesn't mean they've got the answers. Right. It means they've got, they love for you in their heart, but if, all, if, if they are not a homeowner, how are you going to think you're going to be one? Yeah. If they've never been a business owner, then how are you going to become one? If they're not an entrepreneur, then how are you going to be one? You might be, but, you're not, but you role model what you yeah. see. And so, and so with all of this knowledge, right, because you're from Compton. The hood. The D-A- hood. D- no, not the hood. That's the proper people like you say that. <laughs> the hood. The hood. The, right? Yeah, the hood. So being from the hood in Compton, like, like how, where did you get this mindset shift? And what was the genesis of, like, what, what made you say, listen, I care about my community? You know, rainbows only follow storms. Mm-hmm. You cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. Yeah. I mean, we are the resilient people. And my, so you know, it comes from pain. You know, my, my mom and Dad divorced over money. Uh-huh. Number one cause of divorce is money, domestic abuse. Yeah. They were at it. Yeah. Uh, I remember that. I remember the argument. I remember my, my dad hitting my mother, uh-huh. and then my mother hitting my, my dad. Um, and they went their separate ways. Uh-huh. We don't have time for the story, but it's in my book, Up From Nothing, my last book. Now, I'm, so I was five years old. Uh, and my mother divorced my father because she had saved $4,000 for my brother to go to college of his choice. <clears throat> my dad got to the bank first, right? And he wasted the money. My brother, by the way, went into the military because now that they finance his education in college. He then, was that, that was supposed to be four years, Ash. He spent 20 years in the military, habit. He then married a Hawaiian, moved to Hawaii, has Hawaiian children. By the way, this is a beautiful story, but the point is, it's all about four thousand dollars, and having to go to to the military to get your education. If he could have gone to a school of his choice, who knows what he would have done? Right. Maybe he'd been a I don't know a doctor, lawyer. Who knows? But right. it wasn't his choice. Right. So my mother said, "That's it. I'm out." We went to go live with my mother's cousin's uh, family, and there was this dude named O.C. He was uh, I call him my uncle, but he was actually the uh, boyfriend of my mother's cousin. 
And he, in order to make some extra money, he had a job the other day, nine to five. He wanted to hustle five to nine. Unfortunately, he hustled the wrong way. Went around the corner to sell marijuana. He rode his bike back home. And he had saved my life, Ash, because I was swallowing my tongue one day and he hit me in the back of my shoulder blades and cleared my throat passage. So I'm sitting at home waiting for him, hit his house, waiting for him to get home. This guy saved my life. He's my hero, man. I'm just waiting for him to come home. I didn't realize what business he was in. And he's riding his bicycle down the street. And a truck comes behind him and hits him from behind. And drags him down the street until he's dead. Those were the drug dealers in the neighborhood who were sending a message that you were in the wrong neighborhood, the wrong territory. That's a whole other stupid conversation because they don't even own the block they were protecting. That's a city block. But his story was over. So that was a second lesson about money. First lesson was divorce. That destroyed our generational wealth. We owned a gas station. We owned a on an eight-unit apartment building we bought for 18000 now worth $6 million. We lost that. We owned our own home. We owned a cement contracting business. We lost it all because my dad could make it but, couldn't make it, but not keep it. Mm. And didn't realize that his partner was my mother, mm. who was a financial genius. Right. Yeah. But they didn't work together. Mm. So first thing was the divorce. Second thing was this, young, this man I call my uncle being murdered in front of me over money. So my mother buys her first house on an hourly job, goes to Compton, where she could afford the house. 15502 South Fraley, that's the address. So we're in our first home. My best friend was this really smart guy named George. He was an A student, but he had a really crappy family environment. And um, so George hung out with Tweet, the, the, thug, the thug next door to me who sold drugs, and, and George got shot and killed with Tweet. Wow. So I, I'm nine. Right. <laughs> Two murders and the death of generational wealth. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm like, you know, I don't get this. Like, we are brilliant, but yeah. this story never ends well. Mm. I need to figure this thing out. Mm. So I went to school one day, and this white banker, blue suit, white shirt, red tie, mm. comes in my classroom teaching financial literacy. I never heard that phrase before in my life. Mm-hmm. He was from Bank. I'm nine years old. Nine. I'm looking for answers now. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You listen twice as much as you talk. I'm looking for answers, man. I'm, I'm looking for an- wherever I can find them. Now, most of my brothers had bad experience with a white man. It was a police officer throwing them against a patrol car. That wasn't my experience. This white man comes in. My, this is why I'm not afraid of black, white people today. I have no problem with, with them. I had a positive experience. Man, can't teach you financial literacy, money. Second session, I raised my hand. By the third session, I was wearing a suit, by the way. Only son, my Sunday suit. My mother, you put me in these little crushed velvet, three-piece velvet, purple suits. I'm so traumatized to this day. <laughs> it sent me to school in Compton. I got beat up every day. Uh, excuse me, I was, sorry, I was a little trauma moment. So, but anyway, I'm sitting, I raised my hand. Excuse me, sir, what do you do for a living? The banker, what do you do for a living? Uh, and how'd you get rich legally? I was dead serious. You know what I'm talking about. I had never seen nobody in a, a suit in my neighborhood unless it was a detective. It right. was a bad suit. Right, right. Nobody had a business card in my neighborhood. No one worked in an office building unless it was a courthouse. Mm-hmm. No courthouse in Compton. Mm-hmm. No courthouse in the hood. I mean, no office building in the hood. No, nobody had a, a salaried income. You couldn't leave during the day, go to somebody's school. My mother worked, had two 15 minute breaks mm-hmm. and a lunch break. Right. This is real talk. Right. Who are you? Yeah. He said, Young man, I'm a banker and I finance entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Mic drop, I was done. I said, sir, I don't know what an entrepreneur is. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that phrase in my entire life. Mm -hmm. I'm nine, Mm -hmm. I've been in school for, I mean, I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, if it's legal, and you're financing it, I'm gonna be one. No, 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 I don't know, I need that, I'm gonna be one. Mm -hmm. I claimed it. Went home, opened up the dictionary, it's a Google search now. Mm -hmm. I opened up the dictionary, right? Word entrepreneur, French word, create something out of nothing. So I looked at my neighborhood in a different way, as a marketplace. Yeah. And I noticed a guy on the corner selling liquor, called Max Liquor Store, brother. Yeah. And I realized he was a businessman, first time. Mm-hmm. He's a businessman. Yeah. And uh, so we say we hate capitalists. Everybody who sells, everybody you know who's got a, I don't know, uh, who, who babysits kids, yeah. uh, babysits your kids, that's a capitalist. Mm-hmm. You're doing nails, that's a capitalist. Yeah. I mean, all these, who might cut your hair, that's a capitalist. Yeah. So, this guy was selling candy at a, at a little candy station inside the liquor store. So I went and said, man, you're selling the wrong kind of candy. Mm. He said, go away, little boy. I've got a college degree. Mm. I said, that's nice. I've got cavities. Mm. I'm nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
And uh, he says, you got gumption. He said, I'll tell you what, let me, let me this, is, this is a lesson now. Let me uh, hire you as a salesman. Come sell candy at my, count, my sales counter. You're really good. I don't want to be a salesman. What, do you, what job do you want? I want to be a box boy. He said, that's the worst job I've got. That's the one I want. So I went behind the um, coal box. We know where you open it up, you get your beer, you get your drinks. The guy pushing it from behind, that was me. I worked for three weeks and quit. Because all I was trying to do is do market research. Mm. Where did the product come from? Where did he buy it from? What was the wholesale rate? What was the retail rate? I get so frustrated with us when a rock a mic yeah. only, yeah. bounce a basketball only, yeah. uh, swing a bat only, yeah. uh, throw a ball only, hit those beats only. Quincy Jones says, if you don't own music rights, publishing rights, or licensing rights, you're not even in the music business, you're a temporary performer. Mm. I want to write the checks, not cash them. So it was a mind shift. It was a complete, utter, absolute mind shift. And I've been trying to give this memo to our people ever since at scale. Because if you are a drug dealer, and I'm not hitting, there's no negative statement here, right? Because you, it may have been your circumstances that caused you to do that. Because NASCAR came from moonshine running in the Appalachian Mountains, so, right? But if you're a drug dealer, I think it's a stupid business plan and it was not gonna end well. But if you're a drug dealer, you're not dumb. You understand import, export, marketing, wholesale, retail, customer service, security, territory, logistics, right? So anyway, I, I, I quit that job as a box boy, went home, borrowed $40 from my mother, went to Iris Food Store, which is where he bought his inventory, uh, made three hundred dollars a week in the neighborhood candy house. Put, put them out of, the, out of the candy business in six. I think it was six months. I put them out of the candy business. Wow. And um, and then I found girls and lost the business. Recurring thing in my life. But um, but 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 that was the that was cash. That, Ash, that was the, that was the lesson. Yeah. That was that the turning point where I said I can do anything. Yeah. 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 Anything. Yeah. And then, and then now fast forward, you you have this op, you you see this opportunity because of what somebody instilled in you um, early on in your life, teaching financial literacy. And my mother telling me she loved me every day. And your mother telling you she loved you, every which is day. where the self esteem came from. Mm. Talk, talk talk a little bit about that because I think a, a lot of what you talked about earlier, uh, spending money, you know, going to the strip club, looking. Looking for love Looking and all the wrong and all the wrong places. places. Right? And so yeah. a lot, a lot of, um, you know, you know, people buying front row seats and mm -hmm. you know wanting to to be seen. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Love. Flossing. Yeah. And so, so talk a little bit lifestyle about riches. Because you, you know, your mother told you, "I love you every single day." This is the real slavery. Mm. See, I can break out of chains. Mm. Yeah. I can escape a physical structure. Once they got you brainwashed here, yeah. wherever they happen to be, yeah. they don't need to do a thing to you. Mm. Do, it to yourself. do you know that governors will tell you by third grade reason, reading and math scores how many prisons to build? Mm. Wow. This is math. Mm. So my mother telling me she loved me every day of my life mm. was everything. Yeah. Because there's a difference between, between self-esteem and confidence. Mm. Confidence comes from competence. So your camera crew here, your, your, all your gaffes, everybody, they're extraordinarily competent. But clearly they know what they're doing. I can look at you and see you're incredibly competent, which gives you confidence. Right? But we confuse confidence with self-esteem. So if you have high confidence and low self-esteem, you're going to make really bad decisions. So self-esteem is how I esteem myself. What did Quincy Jones say to me? Not one ounce of my self-esteem depends on your acceptance of me. Mm. What did my pastor say to me? It's not what you call me, it's what I answer to that's important and never answer out of your name. Then I added to argue with the fool proves there are two. So if I don't like me, I'm not gonna like you. Mm. Here's crap in the barrel. Yeah. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not gonna feel good about you. If there's somebody watching this show right now and saying, bunk him, who's he think he is? Why would you possibly, where would, think about, where could that possibly come from? You don't know me. I'm going to say a thing to you other than basically your uplift. So if there is a, anything going through your mind, body, or soul right now that's not positive, that's the poison. 
That's the toxicity that was dripped into your soul. If I don't like me, I'm not going to like you. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not going to feel good about you. If I don't love me, don't expect me to love you. If I don't respect me, how in the hell am I going to respect you? Yeah. And here's a big one. If I don't have a purpose in my life, I'm going to make your life a living hell. Because whatever goes around, comes around. And here is the airtight balloon of poverty. This is real poverty. It's not monetary. It's mindset. Right. right? So my mother set me free, really, by telling me she loved me every day of my life. Because her mama didn't tell her that she was loved. Yeah. So she decided she was going to break that cycle. Yeah. So I had self-esteem and confidence. Wow. And because I had self-esteem, you understand when you have self-esteem, the eagles don't fly in packs. Mm -hmm. You've never seen a flock of eagles. Right. Right. They're high altitude birds. Yeah. But buzzards love packs. Yeah. Buzzards are low altitude birds. Yeah. Buzzards always play hating, never play congratulating. Mm -hmm. Always got something negative to say about somebody. Yeah. Stepping on your head to elevate themselves and shooting at eagles. Now think about, as you're watching this segment, everybody in your environment. And then you got turkeys. And turkeys got wings and can't fly. All they do is profile. Translation. Yeah. Trying to be something you are not. not. Yeah. Yeah. In your life, as you, as you go through your week, you're going to see eagles, buzzards, and turkeys. But you'll see eagles very rarely. And even if you are an eagle, I mean, I think I'm an eagle, but once a week, I act like a turkey. A mm. couple days a week, I act like a buzzard, by, just, by, just out of habit. Right. You got to catch yourself. Right. But you want that to be the exception, not the rule. But if everybody around you is acting like a buzzard mm. or a turkey, mm. if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10th. Right. Whatever you hang around, you'll be. So we don't really have time for this conversation, but it's this, this mindset thing. It's everything. It's every. It's literally everything. Yeah. And so, where, where, where would somebody start, right? Because I believe that, right? So, my first book, My Right Money, Right Ten Laws of Financial. Freedom. And you've written ten books. Right. Ten More books. than ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, name of my company, My Right Money Management, because yeah. I know it starts with mindset. Right. And so, where where does that start? I mean, like, how how does somebody watching right now is like, all right, great, I I get it, but where do I start? First of all, you got to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. But I can't save you. No one can save you. You got to save you. Yeah. You got to say, enough. I'm just, I'm, I knock it off. I'm tired. This is not working. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Just stop. Knock it off. Yeah. Right? And when you have toxic people around you, get them away from you. Get them away from you. Yeah. I love you, but you got to go. Yeah. I love you, but you, you cannot hang around here anymore. You're dragging me down with you. Hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. Number three, pick up the phone and make a phone call. Operation Hope services are free. Did you hear that? Free 99. Free. Yeah. Free. I've got no agenda. Free. Why would you not call? Home ownership, credit repair, starting a business. Why would you not call? Yeah. Why would you not call? We're going to raise your credit score 54 points in six months. Why would you want to call? Yeah. If you've never checked your credit, there's an error in your credit report. We're gonna, my team's going to remove that for you. Your credit score your credit's going to pop 30, 40 points. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? If you're watching this and you make less than $60,000 a year in income, the federal government owes you a check. You're watching this, you work, I don't know, wherever you work, you know, McDonald's, Walmart, what does not matter? What do, you make $35,000 a year. I'm looking right at you now. You have three children. God bless you for working. You make $35,000 a year. You need to give this man a Nobel Peace Prize because he just earned you $7,000 cash. It's called the Earned Income Tax Credit. If you make $35,000 a year and you have three children, the federal government owes you a check for $7,000. And listen now, <laughs> it's retroactive for three years. You just got somebody that down. For if you've ball. never filed, yeah. if you just said, what's EITC? Congratulations. You have a check coming. That's simple math. Just under $20,000. Best I can tell. And, it, and, and, and based on the new stimulus bill that just came out, $3,000. Your ch children have never made you money your entire life. They cost you money. 
Now, now, they, now, they, now they're revenue generators because the government owes you $3,000 for each child. Cash, that's $9,000. Am I talking to myself? That's almost $30,000. Why aren't we doing a pro? Why aren't we doing a march for that? Where's the march for the earned income tax credit? I think one of your people, I think, is actually Google searching the EITC right now. Look, check this out. Oh, hold on. One out of four Americans read black people, <laughs> black and brown folks, who qualify for EITC never ask for it. Wow. That's twenty trillion. Sorry, it's twenty billion dollars a year. Twenty billion dollars a year. Wow. We just give it back to the federal government. It's our money. So this stuff's so simple, man. Yeah. It's so it's like low-hanging fruit. 41% of us own a home. 41. Why are you going, why are we renting an apartment in Buckhead with money we don't have to impress people we don't know in a place that don't want you in a house you don't own? Did I miss something? Buy the worst house on the best block in the hood. Buy the best house on the worst block in the hood. Buy, rehab, and hold. Buy, rehab, and rent. But do not sell because they are not growing any more land. Do you know what an inner city in France is called? Paris. You know what an inner city in the UK is called? London. You know what an inner city in, in, in Turkey is called? Istanbul. I can do this all day. This is centrally located, invaluable real estate. Please listen now. Next to freeways, expressways, downtowns, uh, transportation. Doesn't it sound like your neighborhood? Right, right. What are we doing? What are we doing right now? Moving out Moving. of our own neighborhoods. There's no clan coming with sticks of lit, <laughs> you know, you know, lit, you know, pile. Oh, move out of the hood. Right. There's nobody running us out of the hood. Because right. it's here. Because we, we've been taught to value other things. What, if, it, if it blings and right. it sings, right. then, then, then we swing. Right. Yeah. Well, you've been bamboozled. You've been tricked. You've been fooled. If you see a white family with flip-flops and short pants on riding a bicycle in your neighborhood, that is not a tourist. Mm -hmm. They live there. Yeah. And don't be angry at them. Right. In order for them to buy it, somebody's had to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Why are we getting angry at white folks coming in your neighborhood? They, they couldn't buy it unless you sell it right. or don't own it in the first place. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is just real talk to me. He was like, oh, you know, we hate gentrification. No, you don't. Gentrification, dictionary, the dictionary definition is a movement to middle class values. Mm -hmm. It didn't say white people. Right. Didn't say Asians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't say, it said movement to middle class values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Right. More education and home ownership, and own a few stocks. It ain't complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know there's never been a riot in a 700 credit score neighborhood mm. in all of America's history? Mm. All of America's history, never. Ever. Ever. Do you know where riots are? Mm. So you look at the credit score. 500 credit score neighborhoods. Wow. Guess where we live? Mm. You know where George Floyd was murdered at? Mm. 500 credit score neighborhood. Mm. You know where all these police uh, shootings are of black people? In neighborhood, 500 credit score neighborhoods. Wow. How can I be? How can this be a coincidence? Wow. How can this be a coincidence? Wow. You, you know where the you know where the homicide headquarters are in the United States of America? 500 credit score neighborhoods. You know where the drug headquarters are in the United States of America? 500 credit score neighborhoods. I can do this all day. Wow. Do you know the poorest state in America is Mississippi? Do you know the lowest credit score state in America is Mississippi? Wow. So that's not black people. That's poor white people. They can't get their, they can't get their business plan right. They're so focused on hate and, 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 and somebody else's situation, they can't focus on their own uplift. Right. Let me tell you what. Uh, 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 somebody who's built on talking about wealth is, is talking about their ideas. Yeah. Somebody's talking about, about poverty is focused on drama and talking about other people. Yeah. So, if you, so what, what, what are you and friends talking about? If they're talking about other people, right. and if you're spending your whole day managing drama, how do you build wealth? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. am, I, am, am I talking crazy here? <laughs> to me, this is just common sense. Yeah. But folks have got us off our game, man. Mm. They got us distracted yeah. by the drama. Mm. And I'm tired of it. I'm sick 
and tired of it. So the answer is they need to call Operation Hope or they need to read one of your books because you can unlock this yourself. I can raise my credit score. I don't need the Social Justice Committee to raise my credit score. I don't need, look, I don't need a white man to love me. I love me. Right. I don't need somebody else to validate me. I validate me. Yeah. So uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, father, well, first of all, his grandfather, Eddie Williams, owned all that land around the King Center. That's why the King Center is there. Mm. They own the land. So father, Daddy King, who served on the board of a bank for 40 years, hello, served on the board of a bank for 40 years, Citizens Trust Bank for 40 years, preached on Sunday and banked on Monday. So Martin Luther King, whose real name was Michael King, they changed his name to align with the Bible, but Martin Luther King Jr. was playing with a white kid across the street in the, I guess it was the late 40s. And uh, the white kid's father said, you can't play with my son anymore. He had a little convenience store. Everybody following the store? Daddy King walks over very quietly, very gently, never raised his voice because when you have the power, you don't need to use it. He says, I understand that you don't want your son to play with my son. That's correct. Can I ask why? Because he's black. He didn't say black. <laughs> yeah. You do understand that I own the land underneath your convenience door, don't you? End of conversation. Yeah. The guy's attitude immediately improved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what my Jewish friends do. This is what my Jewish friends do. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's the Jewish business model. Mm -hmm. There's only 7.5 million Jews in the United States of America. There's 350 million people. Mm -hmm. But they're a household name. Here's what they do. Because they were attacked in the Holocaust. Yeah. We all know the story. Yeah. Right? A third of all Jews were exterminated in the 40s in like three countries. Uh -huh. There's only 15 million Jews in the world today. Half of them are here. Now, here was their business plan. Everybody watching this? This is, this is, this is the whole deal. This is what they had before and after the Holocaust. As much education you can shove down your throat. Uh -huh. Called the five pillars of success. This is my book up from nothing. They understood wealth creation. Uh -huh. They understood economics, financial literacy, uh -huh. the math of the matter. Uh -huh. Family structure and resiliency. Uh -huh. Self-esteem and confidence. Uh -huh. Role models and environment. Yeah. They had those five things yeah. before the Holocaust. Mm. They had those five things after the Holocaust. Mm. They're doing just fine. Mm. In spite of people not liking them. In spite of the racism. In spite of people hating on them. They're like, okay, you want to burn the flag. I own the flag pole, the land underneath the flag, the building. I own the whole thing. Yeah. This is a little known story. Michael Jackson had a, uh, I love Michael Jackson, but he had a song I can't repeat it, but the song has some interesting uh, lyrics in it. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, the song. Don't do, don't this me, don't that me, right? You can go back and probably find the song. Do you know that certain elements in Hollywood said, this is the king of pop. He was the biggest dude on the planet when this was, sir, we love your artistry. We think you're an incredible talent. You'll either take that line out of that song or you will never publish that album. Wow. Wow. It was removed. Wow. wow. <laughs> how, how, do, how do we get there, though, as a community? Own a home. Right. <laughs> I mean, go get your EITC. Yeah. Get a job, right? But, Stop. But big, I mean, but bigger, this is basic. That, pay your taxes. But bigger than that, you know, because you... you pay your child you said, support. You said something earlier. <laughs> Stop being a baby daddy and be a father. Right. Stop <laughs> being a baby mama and be a mother. Right. I mean... Yeah, but you, but you, you, you said, read a book. You said something about like the Jewish community going through the Holocaust, right? And as African Americans have gone through, you know, slavery and and, and our version of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. um, it's still going on. And, and so and so and so, how can um, one community go through tragedy and use that tragedy to kind of? You know, you know, you know, come together and yeah. build community. Yeah. And there's another community. That's a good question. Like, how, like, yeah. like, because we were one of three people deny those five pillars of success. Mm -hmm. So uh, Native American Indians, poor whites. Yes, poor whites. Even rich whites don't blame poor whites. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking poor whites. I'm just saying this is like a material fact. Like right. the word white didn't exist if for, for 200 million years of human evolution. Nobody talked about white people. Mm -hmm. They talked about rich people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they talked about powerful people like blacks enslaved. 
Did you know that? Uh, yep. Arabs enslaved? Everybody enslaved. How do you think people got from the middle of Africa to the coast? It was black tribal leaders selling each other. They didn't realize they were selling their brothers into slavery. They didn't know they were selling people. They didn't even know there were things beyond the coast, actually, right? But this was economics, right? But the word white was created in the 1600s because wealthy whites saw blacks and whites getting along together as indentured servants. They ran away with each other, call that a union protest, right? Yep. And when they were caught, they said, we cannot have a class riot. Mm. We don't mind a race riot. Yeah. We cannot have a class riot because we're the class. Right. So they told the white dude, we're going to give them, the black people, uh, life for running away. We're going to give you two years. Mm. Just work two more years. Yeah. By the way, you're white like us. Mm. And you're in charge of them. Yeah. Got the guys completely distracted. Yeah. The poor white dude didn't do critical thinking. He didn't say, well, am I rich like you, though? Right. Am I wealthy like you, though? Right. Do I own land like you? Right. Do I have titles like you? No, no, no. He just, oh, 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 I'm white like you. Oh, I'm in charge of them. Oh, oh OK, boss. Yeah, yeah. That's been 40 years. 40 years of us mixing it up, poor whites and poor blacks, over ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. The reason that we are in this spot, and you asked the right question, mm -hmm. is we didn't get three, which you need at least three of these five pillars. Mm -hmm. We're, it doesn't matter which, which of the three you pick. Mm -hmm. I said education, as much as you can shove down your throat, denied us. Mm -hmm. Le I mean, it was like the law. You cannot educate a black person. Right. You can't, we could not read. This is why I'm devastated that we don't read books now. Yeah. Devastated that, that, we don't, that we don't do critical thinking now, right? Because that was the everything. You could not, against the law, yeah. for a black person to read a book. Yeah. That's why churches were so popular, because that was the only place you could read something. It was called the Bible. Mm -hmm. Understanding the math of the matter, mm -hmm. the Freedmen's Bank, you know this story, because yeah. I, I renamed the Freedman, the Treasury Annex building across from the White House, the Freedmen's Bank building. Mm -hmm. It was a bank created to teach free slaves about money, yeah. 1865. Mm -hmm. But Lincoln was killed the next month. Yeah. Frederick Douglass went to run that bank mm -hmm. after Lincoln was assassinated. He thought it was so important, mm -hmm. right? But that bank went away. We never got the memo on financial literacy, how money works. It's not like we got it and screwed it up. Yeah. We just never got the memo. Got it. So it's what we don't know. It's what I said earlier. It's what you don't know that you don't know that's killing you, but you think you know. So that's number two. Number three, family structure and resiliency. What, do we, what happened in slavery, to your point? They dispensed the family, family yeah. right? They held a brother like you down while they abused the wife, mm. not to break your body, mm. not to hurt your feelings, yeah. to break your spirit, because you couldn't protect your wife. Right. So after a certain point of time, you stop fighting mm. here. Right. You stop believing here, yeah. you just became angry mm -hmm. here, and they want you emotional. Mm -hmm. Number four, I've never said this on the interview, so y'all got some, y'all, y'all got some either really hot or really boring. Uh, num uh, number four, I think I'm on number four. Uh, so family structure resiliency, self-esteem and confidence. Well, what happens when you're that dude who's trying to defend your family, but you can't? Mm -hmm. You break your spirit. Your self-esteem is the first that goes. Yeah. So now you're just a walking zombie. You have no hope. The most dangerous person in the world is a person with no hope. hope. Yeah. And now environment. If you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the tenth. Why do we want to be rap stars, athletes, and drug dealers? I love rap stars. My brother Killer Mike, my brother T.I., my Howard Hewitt just hit me up, the singer. I, I love, but I can't, I can't scale Howard Hewitt. I can't scale LeBron. I can't scale T.I. Right. These are not scalable models. Right. You can't have 48 million black people trying to be LeBron. Right. It don't work, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. You need engineers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need bankers. You need you need real estate investors. You need doctors. You need lawyers. You need scalable careers, right? So you so you have all our people bamboozled, yeah. trying to be rap stars, athletes, or God forbid, drug dealers, because that's what we see. We model what we see. Yeah. So your question, you can almost reduce this interview to your last question, because that's why we're messed up today. We we don't have three of those five pillars of success. They were denied us. And after slavery, because Lincoln was assassinated, the rest of the experiment was never completed to teach us about the free enterprise system, get us real freedom, which is that writing that check, not cashing it, because wealth comes from business ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah. The middle class was a great step. I call it the second reconstruction. Mm -hmm. First reconstruction was freedom yeah. after the Civil War. Second reconstruction was a job, mm -hmm. civil rights movement. Third reconstruction is owning the job creator, mm -hmm. 
which is the civil rights movement between now and 2030. Mm. So thank God that uh, the tragedy of George Floyd's murder was transferred into an opportunity for the rebirth of a 400 year old social justice reckoning on black America. Yeah. We have a chance right now yeah. to heal yeah. and to get it right, yeah. which is why I'm doing this interview and why I'm wearing myself out every day trying to get this message out because we're sitting right now in a moment in history. We shouldn't be angry. Yeah. It's a useless emotion. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, be, don't, don't be ashamed, don't be angry. Anger is not a business plan. All it does is get you off your game. Don't don't be frustrated. Don't don't go. Don't spend your time cursing somebody out. None of that pays dividends.